Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron. I wanna welcome you back to another edition of Sound Iron Sessions. Now, Sound Iron Sessions, if you haven't seen it before, basically what it is is we compose in various different styles and genres, and then we break it down showing some mixing, maybe a little bit of mastering, overall composition, and just how we went about writing the track. Now, the tools that I'm gonna be using in this series are Sound Iron Virtual Instruments, but that doesn't mean that you can't use whatever instruments that you have at your own disposal. So take it for what it is, you know, hopefully you get something out of it and hopefully you enjoy it. So the cue that we're gonna be breaking down today is in the style of a more cinematic soundtrack kind of vibe. And I wrote this demo actually for Mimi Page Light and Shadow, the solo vocal library that came out a few weeks ago. And she's been heavily used in a lot of video game scores. She does a lot of her own video game scores. And I wanted to write it in sort of the style of like a fantasy RPG kind of thing. And as composing goes, you never actually know what you're gonna get until it's done. So I ended up getting a little bit of a different result than I first maybe early anticipated when I was thinking about the creative idea of what I was gonna work on. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the computer. I'll show you the track and then we'll start breaking it down. All right, so that's the track that I wrote. Now let's go ahead and start breaking it down and I'll start showing you guys what instruments I used and how I wrote it. So let's go ahead. All right, so some of the instruments that I'm using, I'm using some piano, some harp. Uh, for the piano, I'm using our emotional piano. For the harp, I'm using our Elysium harp. Uh, this one is using the fingernail articulation. I'm also using our Requiem Light Symphonic Choir. This is using the Ensemble Marcado patch. I really love this patch and I'll show you guys wh why a little bit later on because it's just so fun to play and I was just like, yeah, I, I have to use it on this track. After that, I have a whole string section laid out with violins, violas, cellos, and basses and this is using our Hyperion Strings micro library. The Elements version is in the works and it's almost done and you guys are going to love it so definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? We have... Uh, now, oh yeah, so, and like I said earlier, this track was written for Mimi Page, Light and Shadow. Now, there are a lot of other instruments around it, but it's definitely the focal point, I think, in, in uh, sort of like the heart of the melodic content. And then, uh, like for this one, I'm using the, just a, a legato patch, and then I also, I'm using some breaths, because I think having breaths definitely adds a lot more realism. And then I also have some of the phrases as well. Uh, in the Shadow E, 140 BPM. Those are really nice. I'll show you guys those a little bit later. And for the percussion, I'm going to be using Apocalypse Percussion Micro. And the reason I use Micro sometimes is because it's just really quick. It's really quick. Uh, it sounds great. Um, the full version has way more content, but I didn't want to, you know, do too much crazy big epic percussion for this track because as you can hear, it's relatively light. Uh, it does pick up a little bit more towards the end, but I just wanted just a little bit of percussion and just program it really quickly. So uh, we have that. And then I also have some low boom waves as well. So getting into the track, the way I started writing it, and it always kind of varies. Sometimes I might start writing uh, with various instruments. Sometimes I might do in kind of a traditional piano sketch. Now with this track, I really wanted to have a, a strong melody and a melody that, um, you know, just it has a really emotional tone to it. 
So I actually started writing this on emotional piano, and this is pretty much the whole overall harmonic structure of the song, which all the other instruments were sort of written around. And this is pretty much the heart and soul of the piece. Everything else was written around it. Strings, um, not necessarily percussion, but when it comes to the more melodic instruments, it was all sort of based around the harmonic content of the piano piece. So uh, let's just go ahead and listen to the piano. Just so you can hear that. This is kind of the core of it. So let's get an idea of, of just how it sounds. So you can see it's very melodic. Uh, if you were to go ahead and, and take uh, the overall, I guess, like the chordal aspects of it out. This is all, this is pretty much how I started before I even started adding chords to it. So with this, I wrote the melody and then based the overall chord uh, harmonic structure around it. Now let's go ahead and add back in the chords. So as you can see, it's not a very crazy chord progression or melody. Uh, sometimes I like to try and keep things simple. I feel like when you when you keep it simple, uh, you kind of let the melody speak for itself. So uh, you know, there's nothing really too crazy going on here. So uh, after I developed the whole uh, piano piece, the next thing I wanted to add was another instrument that has a very a little bit more of a, of a plucky texture. That's why I went for for the harp. And with this, I'm just playing off of the piano a little bit. There's nothing really too crazy going on with the harp. And I did use some reverb on this. I used Valhalla Vintage Verb. Uh, if you've been watching Sound Iron Sessions, you've probably seen me use this plugin before. So uh, I just wanted to sort of wash it in a, in a nice reverb, put it into a space because Elysium Harp is very dry. Uh, I mean, that's what's great about it is you can place it in any, any sort of space you want but I really wanted it to, to have a nice um, plucky rhythmic texture to it and sort of add a nice space together with the piano. So let's listen to, let's listen just to Elysium Heart by itself. So as you can see, there's a very nice long tail and uh, as you can see, the decay is on pretty high. It's around a little over four seconds. And that's cool, you know, it, you know, sometimes you don't always want to put a lot of reverb, sometimes you do. Um, and then let's listen to how that sounds with the piano. Also, like I was saying originally when I started writing this, I wanted it to have that kind of fantasy RPG thing going on because, uh, you know, that kind of takes me back to my childhood a little bit, you know, just playing RPG games and uh, I like music, especially that kind of music where it sort of puts you into a world, into a, you know, like a really cool, you know, space like you're walking around, you're discovering things and uh, I just, I really like that kind of stuff. And then after that, I really wanted to... Um, Add a little bit more impact, a little bit more low-end emotional impact to the piece. So what I did is I used these low boom wave sounds. These were created by Spencer Nunemaker. He also works at Sound Iron. And uh, if you want to see a video on how Spencer and I actually craft low-end booms, you can go up here and, and watch that video. We did a tips and tricks a while back and we could show you how we sound designed our own and how you can sound design your own as well. So now let's go ahead and add in those low booms and uh, you know, you'll, you'll automatically hear that it just kind of, kind of sucks you in a little bit. So let's check that out. So you can see it's very subtle, but it's almost uh, the subtle things like that, that kind of, kind of take you in a little bit more. So this is pretty much all I did for up until measure nine. 
And then measure nine is where it starts to pick up. You know, we bring in some strings and we also bring in the, uh, the solo vocals, which was uh, Mimi Page. And uh, let's just go ahead now and listen to that. We'll listen to it and then I'll, I'll break down the strings and the, and the solo vocals. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there. Now let's go ahead and check out the strings. Now, like I said, I wrote the strings using Hyperion Strings Micro. Uh, and all this was basically derived from the piano sketch that I did. And then I just sort of broke it into each individual section. So for violins, violas, cellos, and basses, they all have their own parts and their own sort of counter moving melodies. Um, uh, I'm not the greatest when it comes to four part writing. I try to use my ear as much as possible. But uh, so I, I try to get it to sound as, as good with the piece as possible. But uh, let's just go ahead and listen to uh, just the strings by themselves. So, you know, it, it, it definitely it complements the piece, I think. Uh, I think it sounds cool when you put it with the piano. You can sort of hear how it works together. And it definitely kind of goes away a little bit here and there from just the overall chord structure because like I said, there's a lot of little counter melodies and stuff. So let's, let's hear how that sounds. So, and all of these are using uh, legato patches. So for violins, violas, cellos, uh, well, this is, this is actually, it's actually basses. So, um, way to be professional, huh? All right, so now that we have that, let's just, let, let's listen to each individual one and then I'll just kind of add them in so you can see what they're adding and how it sort of fills in the overall uh, structure when it comes to the strings. So here's violins. Now let's bring in violas. Now cellos. So you'll, you'll, now you'll start to hear that, that low end come in when it comes to the string section. And I really like it when, when you have strings that move. So maybe one note might go up, one note might go down. Uh, that's just, uh, that's something I try to implement when it comes to string writing, just because it's nice to have that sort of, you know, those different counter melodies and contrapuntal motion and that sort of thing. So for the strings, I had them all set to a bus and then I'm doing some EQ just over the overall string section. Uh, a little bit of uh, high passing, a little bit of a low mid cut and a little bit of a high end cut and then a little bit of a high end boost. And this is because I wanted the strings to be a little bit darker but at the same time I wanna bring that air in. So uh, that's what I did for that. And then I also used Virtual Tape Machine from Slate and this just kinda of warms the strings up a little bit. Uh, this is another cool trick that you can do, let's say even if you're doing, let's say, guitar mixing, it kind of shelves off some of maybe those more uh, like higher frequencies and kind of softens them up a little bit. Uh, being that it's on a, on a group track, it, I guess, kind of brings them in a little bit more. All right, now for the solo vocals, uh, pretty much the main heart of the melody is on a legato patch, and I'm using the ooh vowel type. I do switch to another vowel type a little bit later on. Yeah, you can see down here there's a, a key switch and that just changes it to an ah. And the reason I did that is because I felt with the way the music was evolving, I wanted it to not necessarily just be an ooh sound. I felt like ah would kind of kind of lift it up and, and bring it into the next part of the song, which is the uh, sort of like the third section of the piece. Uh, let's just go ahead and listen to how the solo vocals sound by themselves, soloed. <laughs>
really nice tone. I really like this library. It's, it's definitely one of my favorites that we've come out with. And um, let's see, what am I doing? I think when it comes to the processing for this, I have them sent to uh, another group track. I also have some compression. I'm, I'm just using, it's just a preset. It's a vocal preset called Upfront. Um, it, it works it, it works pretty well for solo vocals, so I just, I just left it. And then for the reverb on the solo vocals, I'm using a different reverb this time. I'm using Seventh Heaven Professional. I really like this reverb. Uh, one of the cool things about it is there's a lot of really great presets in it, but you can also see how the tail reflects in that this is sort of like the room and you can see kind of how the how the decay reflects in it in what would be sort of like a, a cyberspace. So let's check that out. So you see how you can see it kind of fade off? I, I think that's cool. It kind of allows you to see the way the tail is reacting in what would be like a virtual room. Uh, let's, let's listen to how the solo vocals sound even without the reverb because I really watched this in a lot of reverb. Uh, her vocals sound really great with a lot of reverb. Her style is very ethereal. So I definitely, when I think of using her, vo her vocals, I automatically think to kind of want to use a lot of reverb. But uh, let's hear how it sounds even with no reverb on it. And it's, it's relatively really dry. Um, there is a little bit of reverb on this because the library comes with a little bit of reverb on it. So if you really want to hear how dry this library can get, let's check that out. Super dry. It's basically like she's in the room with you. Um, but, you know, adding your own reverbs and even the reverbs built into the effects rack uh, definitely, definitely opens it up and puts it in a little bit more of that celestial space. Um, I also used uh, one of the breaths because... I, I like using breaths, like I said earlier, it, it adds a little bit more realism. It sounds like you're hearing the person actually perform. So using breaths, and the breaths that I'm using come with Mimi Page Light and Shadow. And, you know, experiment with this because it definitely, uh, it, it, it adds to that realism and, you know, brings the solo vocals to life a little bit. So you can hear it definitely, uh, it, it lets you know something's, something's coming. She's gonna start singing. And then after that, getting into the final section of the song, uh, this is where I bring in some other elements. We're gonna be bringing in some, some phrases for Mimi Page, Light and Shadow. We're gonna be bringing in some percussion. We're gonna be bringing in some men's choir. I felt since uh, this last part, I wanted to, to, to end a little bit more on a, I guess a little bit more of an optimistic, epic note. Um, for the most part, the piece has been very emotional, borderline sad, melancholy kind of thing. But uh, I wanted it to kind of go out a little bit more bombastic, and the tempo increases a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and listen to just just the men's choir. <laughs> And for this, I'm using the Ensemble Marcados patch. And this is one of my favorites just because it's, it's so fun to play. And what I do is I set it to phrase and then you can see here there's these phrases that repeat. I don't have it set to any kind of key switch to where it starts on a specific phrase. I just kind of let it do its thing. And, uh, and I like how it sounds and I like what it adds. So let's, 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 I'm gonna let it play again and then you can see how the phrases change. <laughs> And you can add even more. This goes up to 12, but I'm only using eight. It's just literally what it loads with. So you can add more. You can also change these however you want. Uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of possibilities with it. And then for the strings on this last section, I wanted them to be a lot more driving. I wanted them to have a lot more energy because like I said, it's picking up, it's getting a little bit more epic. So um, the only thing that I have as far as a legato thing going on is the, uh, the violins are playing 
uh, a melody, and then I have the rest of the string sections just driving on spiccatos. So let's listen to just the strings on this part. I really, I really like writing strings for spiccato patches because I don't know, it's just fun. Uh, it, you know, it's 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 almost like writing for the guitar, but for strings, it just you know, uh, having a little bit more driving is always fun. And then the percussion definitely backs up a lot of the string stuff because it's it's adding a lot more, a lot of more aggression, a little bit more uh, intensity. Now let's listen to just the strings and the percussion together. So you can see the percussion's really backing up the strings. Uh, it, it's it's kind of, you know it's doing its own thing, but at the same time it's working together. And then I definitely have some low booms going on for this part. You can see here they're a little bit lower, and here they kind of uh, I boosted them up a little bit because I didn't want them to be too loud in the very first and second section of the song. I wanted them to get a little bit louder towards the end because that's where it's really starting to build. And then for the solo vocals, I have some phrases going on, and with the phrases I really like these because. Um, while legato patches are great for melodies, I like phrases because it really uh, it really adds a more realistic sound to the music. And you know, there's different ones in various keys. And this is the key that I use. I use Shadow E140. I use the Shadow ones because the the Shadow section of the library it's a little bit darker, a little bit more ominous. And uh, I wanted it to to have that a little bit more power, but a little bit of mystery as well. So. Let's listen to just the uh, let's listen to just the phrases by themselves. They they sound great. You can really hear um, what they're bringing. <laughs> You can see they sound a little bit creepy, a little bit ominous. And Mimi Page has her own really unique style when it comes to this kind of stuff. She says sometimes she likes to sing in her own language. So uh, it's, it definitely makes it a little bit more unique. Um, and then, let's see, what else do we have? And then towards the end, just for the, the ending of the melody, I brought in a little bit of the legato again, just just so you can hear it kind of end. Like it, 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 it kind of, uh, Sounds like it's coming to a close. So when you hear it just soloed, you can hear that there's some different melodies going on, but in, in the context of the overall piece, you can hear how the legato melody is bringing the song to a close a little bit. And that's it. Um, let's see, as far as any other mixing stuff goes, um, I have a little bit of EQ on my master channel. This is just doing a little bit of a high cut, a low shelf, a little bit of dip in the low mids just to add a little bit of clarity, and then also a high shelf. Um, sometimes, this is, ref well, this is referred to as top down mixing. Sometimes I'll even start a track with this on here and use it as uh, a way of having to do less overall individual mixing on, on tracks. Uh, depending on what you're doing, I mean, this isn't a rule. It's just, it's just a way of doing it. So definitely, uh, you know, it's just another approach, but like I said, there's no rules. And then I'm doing some compression. I'm using the uh, Slate Gray compressor. This is, I think it's supposed to be modeled after an SSL. I'm not. I'm not too sure, but uh, it's definitely cool. I used to use the the Waves SSL G comp a lot, and I do sometimes. It, it varies. Um, I'm also using OTT. This is something I heard about from Alex Michaela. Uh, he his channel. He he's used it before, and I think it was really cool. And I, I wanted to try it out on this track, and it definitely it definitely 
kind of lifts the overall mix up. So let's, let's hear how it sounds without this and then I'll, I'll turn it on. <laughs> So you can hear how it's a little bit darker and then this just kind of opens it up. So I really, I really like this and it's a free plugin. Uh, if, if you're into uh, free plugins and stuff that sounds cool, definitely check out OTT. And then to bring it up to a little bit more of that commercial volume, I'm using the Slate FGX limiter. Uh, this is just a really great limiter and um, nothing, nothing too crazy. I turned off the compressor and I'm just basically turning it up to a level that I think sounds good and desirable for me. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it as far as this goes. So I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and leave some comments, let us know what you think. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I definitely recommend that you do. We have a lot of really awesome content coming up this year as well as a lot of cool interviews and uh, much more things to come. So definitely do that. Hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time we post a new video. So thank you again so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.